We now need to reconsider how stars and galaxies evolved in the early cosmos, according to recent distant galaxies seen in web photos. Astronomers are suddenly discovering record-breaking far-off galaxies by the dozen as they sort through the enormous quantity of data being collected by the James Webb Space Telescope. The initial observations made by the telescope seem to show that large, brilliant galaxies had already begun to develop within the first 250 million years after the Big Bang. If proven, this would pose a significant challenge to existing cosmological theory, but for now, there's a large if in there. The astronomical preprint service ArcSiv was overwhelmed with reports claiming the discovery of galaxies so far away that it took their light around 13.5 billion years to reach us after NASA released Webb's first batch of scientific data. Many of them seem to be larger than the mainstream cosmological model that explains the structure and development of the universe. Searching for Distant Galaxies the most distant known galaxy prior to the James Webb Space Telescope's deployment was GNZ-11, which scientists saw when it was roughly 420 million years after the Big Bang, giving it what astronomers refer to as a redshift of 11.6. Redshift tells how much the universe has stretched the light originating from a galaxy. The farther back in time we perceive a galaxy, the greater the redshift. Massive young stars in young galaxies release enormous quantities of intense ultraviolet radiation. The wavelengths of this light stretch, or redshift, all the way into the infrared, which is radiation that Webb's detectors are sensitive to, as it travels across expanding space for billions of years. In order to correctly calculate the redshifts, which indicate how far out into space, and hence how far back in time you are gazing, either Webb spectrometers or the ground-based ALMA observatory that works at even longer wavelengths must be used. However, there is a simple, although less accurate, solution that provides a general understanding. In intergalactic space, neutral hydrogen atoms absorb ultraviolet light with wavelengths under 91.2 nanometers. This threshold also redshifts for far-off objects to longer wavelengths, reaching the infrared for the furthest galaxies. A galaxy could be seen in some channels, but not in others, because Webb's near-infrared camera and IR cam collects data using a variety of filters, each of which covers a distinct wavelength range. The look-back period and redshift of the galaxy are generally indicated by the wavelength range in which it vanishes. On July 19th, only six days after the initial scientific data from Webb were made public, two different astronomy teams each published their study using this method. Both teams, one led by Marco Castellano from the Rome Observatory, Italy, and the other by Rohan Naidu from the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard, and Smithsonian, discovered two relatively bright galaxy candidates at redshifts of approximately 11 and 13 which are located in universes that are 400 and 325 million years old. Another pair of separate teams, headed by Callum Donnan of the University of Edinburgh and Yuchi Harakane of the University of Tokyo, revealed the fascinating discovery of an unusually huge galaxy at a redshift of 17 in the days that followed. That is equivalent to gazing back just 225 million years from the time of the Big Bang Another research by Ha Jing Yan and colleagues from the University of Missouri even suggested that some of their candidate galaxies would reach a redshift of 20, which is 180 million years after the Big Bang. The stated redshifts need to be spectroscopically verified before the scientific community accepts these findings. Four regions of the sky have so far yielded possibilities for far-off galaxies to astronomers. Some searched the area around SMAC as 723-73, the galaxy cluster shown in the initial web photograph and located in the southern constellation Volans, the flying fish. Others studied the cosmic evolution, early release science in Sculptor, and the Grism Lens Amplified Survey from Space, which are both continuing studies. Another early release picture of Stephen's Quintet, a tight collection of galaxies in Pegasus, also revealed three possibilities. 
The fact that each team has its own numbering system makes it challenging to keep track of all the new discoveries. For instance, there are many names for the Galaxy candidate with a redshift of 17, including ID 93316, CER as 1749, and CR 2D17 1. Because it is uncertain as to whether it is an early galaxy or a very dusty galaxy at a redshift of 5, which corresponds to a look back period of only 12.6 billion years, Naidu and his colleagues have given it the moniker Schrodinger's Galaxy. Many of the reports that have been published thus far suggest that their findings, if proven, may cast doubt on the accepted theory of cosmology. This hypothesis, called Lambda Cold Dark Matter, CDM, postulates that the enigmatic cold dark matter, which constitutes about 85% of all matter, and dark energy, designated by the Greek letter Lambda, control the development of the universe. CDM predicts that the earliest galaxies may emerge as early as 200 million years after the Big Bang, but they would be tiny, dim, and resemble dwarf galaxies. Instead, some of the far-off candidate galaxies in the web data seem to have roughly 1% of the mass of the Milky Way, which is already a significant amount at that early time. Even one contender with a mass equivalent to our own galaxy was discovered by Oival Labbe from the Swinburne University of Technology, Australia, and his associates at a redshift of 10, which is 500 million years after the Big Bang. According to a recent research by Michael Boylan Colchin from the University of Texas, Austin, the CDM predicts that in a survey region that is 1,000 times bigger, there will only be one such colossal galaxy. However, Princeton University theorist David Spurgel is not yet concerned. He adds, I believe we need to be careful about these assertions. According to Spurgel, measurements of a distant galaxy's mass are based on observations of the galaxy's brightness at different wavelengths, which, incidentally, might be affected by ongoing instrument calibration. However, the estimations also depend on the ratio of low-mass to high-mass stars being the same as it is in the Milky Way. Low-mass star formation may have been hindered in the early cosmos due to greater pressures and temperatures, however. Low-mass stars contain the majority of the mass at low redshifts, according to Spurgel. At large redshifts, this may not be true. I believe we are discovering how effective high-mass star creation was in the early cosmos. Once again, the ultimate judgment must wait until thorough follow-up spectroscopic observations. Astronomers will be fighting for observation time on Webb to sort things out, claims Creek. These newly found high redshift galaxies may be seen as cosmic newborns, in contrast to current galaxies, which may house hundreds of billions of stars. These galaxies are merely a few thousand light years wide and only contain tens of millions of stars. The cosmic babies, according to astronomers, might be as young as 20 million years old and are thought to be less than 100 million years old. The very earliest galaxies in the universe, which could be located at redshift 25 or beyond, have not yet been discovered by scientists. However, the newly discovered galaxies reflect generations of galaxies that came just after and are still in their adolescence, according to experts. It is possible that galaxies were abundant in the early history of the universe based on the quantity of ultraviolet radiation and the number of high redshift galaxies that the observatory is seeing so early in its mission. In contrast to certain predictions, there may be a steady fall in star formation as we go farther back in time as opposed to a sudden decline beyond redshift 11. The following issues include how far back in time JWST can view and if it will be sufficient to find the very earliest galaxies that existed maybe only 100 million years after the Big Bang. JWST has detected these strong galaxy candidates at great distances. Since it would depend on accidental gravitational lensing to bring primordial galaxies into view, such a finding would demand a significant amount of good fortune. But one thing is certain, the new Webb Space Telescope has already outperformed most scientists' predictions in the first few months of operation. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, 
subscribe to our channel, and hit the like button. Until next time.